Welcome friends to Rabindranath Tagore's Kitanjali, verse 31. Kitanjali, as you know, is one of Tagore's best-known works, for which he received the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1913. It is a collection of poetry written in Bengali and published in India in the year 1910. Tagore then translated it into prose poems in English as Gitanjali, Song Offerings. And this was published in 1912 with an introduction by William Butler Yeats. Medieval Indian lyrics of devotion provided Tagore's model for the poems of Gitanjali. He also composed music for these lyrics. Love is the principal subject, although some poems detail the internal conflict between spiritual longings and early desires. Many of the verses in Gitanjali are beautiful prayers written after a gut-wrenchingly painful period in Tagore's life, during which he lost his father, wife, daughter and a son in quick succession. His unfathomable pain and unshaken devotion to God are captured in the moving prose verses of Gitanjali, which Tagore dedicated as song offerings. With this brief introduction, let us go on to the poem, verse 31 from Gitanjali. Prisoner, tell me, who was it that bound you? It was my master, said the prisoner. I thought I could outdo everybody in the world, in wealth and power, and I amassed in my own treasure house the money due to my king. When sleep overcame me, I lay upon the bed that was for my lord, and on waking up, I found I was a prisoner in my own treasure house. Prisoner, tell me, who was it that wrought this unbreakable chain? It was I, said the prisoner who forged this chain very carefully. I thought my invincible power would hold the world captive, leaving me in a freedom undisturbed. Thus, night and day, I worked at the chain with huge fires and cruel heart strokes. When at last the work was done and the links were complete and unbreakable, I found that it held me in its grip. Now, what do we infer from these lines? We are prisoners to ourselves. So who imprisoned us? Who forged our inner chains? How to break free from them? Now read the poem aloud. Shall we analyze it? The poem is a call for a straightforward and gradual realization of the self. It is not the external chains that constrain the prisoner, but the ones that are internal. It was my master, changes to it was I. We are both the imprisoned and the imprisoner. Now one can speculate who or what exactly was that master, beside wealth, power, and monetary treasure. Everyone has one's own vices, and those things constitute your own treasure house, your unbreakable chain. Tucker puts his finger upon the two main factors in any society that imprison people. As you know, they are money and power. More accurately, it's the unsatiated desire for money an uncurbed fascination for invincible power. In fact, money and power as such might be neutral, but the motivation behind their pursuit has everything to do in making money and power masters that imprison those that pursue them. If we could agree that the conversation in the poem is going on between the poet and the prisoner, and not between the poet and two different prisoners, the link between 
money and power cannot be missed. At the beginning of the conversation to the question of who it is that had imprisoned the prisoner, the prisoner responds that it was his or her master. Arguably, the master could be money or the prisoner's unsatiated desire for money. But perhaps the prince Suna hasn't realized that yet and therefore was pointing fingers at someone else, the said master. As the conversation progresses and the poet asks the same question in different words, the prisoner then realizes that it was not his or her master that has really imprisoned him or her. Rather, it was I, responds the prisoner. That makes us think that the prisoner is on the course of realization of what had really imprisoned him or her. It is not the external chains that bind the prisoner, but the ones that are internal. They turn the poem to the person as the one that is both the prisoner and the one who imprisoned cannot be ignored. Now it's time for review questions. Are we not often enough human prisoners of our cravings? How and why? What are the ways are you a prisoner to yourself? Who imprisoned you? When? Where? And how? What are the things you are running after? What's the wealth you want to amass? What is the meaning of sleep overcoming us? What sort of sleep is this? How does it overcome us? What is the meaning of being prisoners in our own treasure house? What do the chains stand for in the poem? Are we free? Who has forged our chains? How and when? Explain what you can do to break loose from your chains and escape the prison of your treasure house. The poem is replete with thoughts, thoughts on attachments, good and bad ones, inner freedom, true independence, being possessed by our possessions, being enslaved by the people we love. In love relationships, freedom should not be lost, breaking away from compulsions, even religious compulsions, meaning of being autonomous persons. Freedom from fears, anxieties, guilt, the enslaving effect of resentment, rancor, and unforgiveness, being slaves to human respect and public opinion. What are the conditions and requisites for freedom? Security, self-acceptance, self-love, being ourselves, having an awareness, radical questioning and being away from prejudice, possessing honesty, courage, vitality, etc. The poem also has parallel biblical references which are found in the New Testament. Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, and Gospel of Matthew, chapter 23, Gospel of Mark again, chapter 6, and Gospel of Luke, chapter 9. To pick out the verses and try to relate with the thoughts of Tagore. Now, it's time to attempt your own analysis of the poem. Here are some references which might help you in your review. Study. Thank you.